We will have a national emergency, and we will then be sued, and they will sue us in the Ninth Circuit, even though it shouldn't be there, and we will possibly get a bad ruling, and then we'll get another bad ruling, and then we'll end up in the Supreme Court, and hopefully we'll get a fair shake, and we'll win in the Supreme Court, just like the ban. President Trump declaring the situation at the border a national emergency to fund the border wall and predicting the legal fight ahead. With all the fighting in Washington, not many people realize just how dangerous the situation is for the border agents on the ground. Tommy Lahren got a first-hand look for Fox Nation. This area right now, this is our border protected by this barbed wire fencing and, you know, wood. Would this area be suitable for fencing if you could afford fencing to put here? The way the terrain's set up, it's viable to construct border fencing in this area. We had learned over the years that when we put a solid barrier we couldn't see through, our mm -hmm. adversaries, whether it be drug smugglers, illegal aliens or smugglers, would hide behind them and then use it to basically assault our agents, throw rocks at our agents, or just hide like lots and lots of people and then all at one time run across. Would this then line your border, one of these prototypes would then line your border. That design right there is basically what we're, we're looking at going forward. This is inhospitable terrain, not only for them, but also for us. It's difficult for us to deploy technology into these areas. So we have to make up for that by either using aircraft or just having agents on the ground hiking in. And that's where the real work of the Border Patrol comes into play. Agents have to get up here either by us or by foot. We had a hundred foot long fast rope, which is a rope about the diameter of a fireman's pole that you can slide down. We're, we're roughly eight miles north of the border, and uh, we encounter uh, camouflage groups. Uh, they wear a, a, like a real tree or a musky type camo from head to toe. It's fine for us to arrest people that have crossed the border illegally, but the true targets and the true people that we want to hit hard every single day are the facilitators. It's the scouts on the mountaintops. It's the guys that are foot guides for the groups that are bringing them across. It's the load drivers and all of the criminals that are facilitating this illegal trafficking of people. There's absolutely no value on human life when it comes to the cartel that's operating south of the border. The people that are crossing have no say in when they're crossing, where they're crossing, or how they're crossing. They're being crossed in the hands of criminals, and it's a dangerous situation. Tommy Laren joins me now. So, Tommy, when you were shooting the inhospitable terrain and those men were kind of just climbing down off of a helicopter and uh, pursuing illegal crossings on foot, where exactly was that? That was in the Nogales, Tucson area in, in Arizona, in Arizona, and it was about 115 degrees when we were there. So what these guys are doing day in and day out, they're hiking into the middle of their desert, they're hiking back some areas. It's so remote that they can't even take ATVs. So these people are the real heroes of this country, and they don't get nearly enough credit. So some of that inhospitable terrain, it was almost like huge mountaintops and cliffs. You couldn't put um, border fencing there. That's where you'd have to just surge a lot of Border Patrol agents. Agents, correct? Yeah, and so that's what I asked them about, because obviously that area is not really suitable for a lot of fencing or a wall, but if we have wall in other places where we can put a wall, then our agents can focus on those remote areas. Exactly. So when I went there, I asked them time and time again, you know, does a wall work? And they said, we need a wall because then we can focus on these areas and we don't have to be sitting there worrying about people running across and we can divert our efforts. It really makes sense, but the Democrats can't seem to get it. Yeah, they don't want to listen to the experts. They, they think they know better than the people on the ground. When you, in the beginning of the package, could you see where you kind of highlighted that pathetic little fence? Um, it was about as tall, about five feet tall here, with some little barbed wire. Where exactly was that? That was in Arizona as also well, in the Arizona area. And yes. Yeah, and it was that bad. I mean, that was not just a small little area. There was a lot of area that either had no fencing at all or had that. I mean, I think you and I have talked about this before, but I grew up in South Dakota, and we have better fencing to keep livestock in than we do protecting our border, which is really pathetic. Well, you know, the Democrats don't want meat around. You know, they want to get rid of your hamburger like Cory Booker, so uh, that, that fencing could come in handy later. What a lot of people don't understand, Tommy, is they say, you know, oh, the drugs, all the narcotics, they come through ports of Entry. But you know what? Who do you think deals the drugs? You have to have men. And the guys that are dealing it in, in the United States, they cross the border illegally on foot between the ports of Henry. Listen, great job down there on the border. That was great footage. And uh, you guys can check that out with Tommy on Fox Nation. See you later.
Welcome to Waters World. I'm Jesse Waters. Democrat control freaks, that's the subject of tonight's Waters Words. Democrats like to say they want government out of the bedroom. But ironically, the Democrats want the government in every other room in your house, in your neighbor's house, in your car, in your restaurants, and everybody everywhere else in America. Senator Cory Booker is a vegan and says eating meat will destroy the planet. The tragic reality is this planet simply can't sustain billions of people consuming industrial produced animal agriculture because of environmental impact. It's just not possible. Booker wants to crack down on big beef and big pork. Good luck running for president trying to take away meat. Speaking of meat, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and her Green New Deal sets a goal to eliminate cow flatulence. She also wants to abolish air travel. Got that? Democrats want to get rid of airplanes and hamburgers. But it gets worse. San Francisco Democrats considered banning pets. Dogs, cats, birds, hamsters. Animal activists wanted to even ban the sale of goldfish. Good morning, Gil. I said good morning, Gil. Democrat Congressman Raul Gravala tried to remove the words, quote, so help you God from the oath that witnesses take before testifying. That's right. Democrats want to remove God from Congress. Enter the word police. Apparently the word man is now offensive. In New York, Democrats want to change the words fireman and policeman to more gender neutral terms like firefighter and police officer. California politicians just banned the use of he and she during committee hearings. We are now a state recognizing uh, the non-binary designation uh, as a, a gender. We are using the phrase they um, and replacing uh, other designations so that it's a gender neutral designation of they. Basically that's the primary reforms and revisions to the committee rules. Sheila Jackson Lee wants to ban the word welfare. Liberal atheists have been trying to ban the phrase Merry Christmas, as you know. Illegal aliens has been changed to undocumented immigrants. And we know President Barack Obama refused to say the words radical Islam. Liberals have tried to get rid of football, happy meal toys, plastic straws, and even large sodas. Hey, guys. Oh, big golf, huh? All right. Well, see you later. They don't want you to drive an SUV. They don't want you to light fireworks or even listen to Ben Shapiro. College campuses continue to shut down poor little Ben Shapiro from even speaking. Bloomingdale's was forced to remove a t-shirt that said fake news because a sniveling little reporter said it was hurtful. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm sick of liberals telling us what to wear, what to say, what to drive, what to eat, and who to listen to. Take a look at a liberal. Does it look like they know what they're doing? Why do we even have to listen to these people? It doesn't look like they know how to control their own lives, let alone how to control yours. President Trump says he is declaring a national emergency to build a border wall because of what he calls an invasion from the South. The president made that declaration official this morning. The president conceding he will be sued, but is predicting success eventually. Chief White House correspondent John Roberts has the story tonight from the North Lawn. Good evening, John. Greg, good evening to you. White House officials tell Fox News that attorneys spent weeks going through all of the ins and outs of an emergency declaration to make sure that the president would be on solid ground today. Still, he stirred up a hornet's nest. With a stroke of his executive pen, President Trump today invited what may be the biggest challenge to his executive power yet. We're talking about an invasion of our country with drugs, with human traffickers, with all types of criminals and gangs 
In total, President Trump is looking at $8 billion to build his border wall, $1.37 billion from the DHS appropriation, $601 million from the Treasury Department's forfeiture fund, $2.5 billion from the Pentagon's drug interdiction program, including $2.2 billion that will be reprogrammed from other areas of the Pentagon, and $3.6 billion from the military construction budget. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer and Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi ripped the president for raiding the Pentagon budget to build a wall in a joint statement saying the president's unlawful declaration over a crisis that does not exist does great violence to our Constitution and makes America less safe, stealing from urgently needed defense funds for the security of our military and our nation. The president today insisted moving the money would not hurt the military. We had certain funds that are being used at the discretion of generals, at the discretion of the military. Uh, some of them haven't been allocated yet, and some of the generals think that this is more important. In making his case, President Trump today pointed to dozens of emergency declarations that never drew the type of fire he's receiving. But those declarations weren't used as a way to go around Congress on appropriations. The president also gave his critics more ammunition today when he seemed to indicate the emergency declaration wasn't necessary. I didn't need to do this, but I'd rather do it much faster. And I don't have to do it for the election. I've already done a lot of wall. Socialist firebrand Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said she'd introduced legislation to block the president, tweeting, Joaquin Castro, Texas, and I aren't going to let the president declare a fake national emergency without a fight. A congressional fight may be the least of the president's worries. White House officials, even the president, openly acknowledge their attempt to reprogram military money will land them in court. They will sue us in the Ninth Circuit, uh, even though it shouldn't be there, and we will possibly get a bad ruling, and then we'll get another bad ruling, and then we'll end up in the Supreme Court, and hopefully we'll get a fair shake, and we'll win in the Supreme Court. The words had barely escaped the, escaped the president's lips when the ACLU announced ACLU rather announced that it would sue the president, and Democrats on the House Homeland uh, rather de Democrats in the House Judiciary Committee I'm sorry today sent a letter to the White House saying that they wanted to investigate the president's emergency declaration and asked the White House to make officials from both here and the Department of Justice available for the hearings. Brett, more on this with the panel. John Roberts live on the North Lawn. John, thanks. Thank you.